Day one of Open Sousa. So let me start this off. I'm coming from Arch in an i3 window manager to Open Sousa in KDE. Oh my God. What a difference. What a huge change from one to the other. So I want to preface this video because coming from that to this is just. Oh, felt like a breath of fresh air. Let's just say that I'm tired of the complex. And this was so darn simple. So let's start with the installation of OpenSUSE. The very first time I installed this in a virtual machine, I was just completely lost. Um, they use something called YAST as a kind of a control center. And it is really good. I, I loved it, but I didn't understand some of the aspects of Linux when I first did OpenSUSE. I was just fresh to the scene, maybe had been in a desktop environment as my daily driver for a couple weeks. I think actually if you look back on like day 10 or 14 is when I was holding the hat and the fire kind of one in that that video. Um, I'll, I'll link that up there. but. You, I kind of touched on Open Susan. I was like lost. I couldn't quite grasp it. Well, now that I've done Arch and I've learned so much more about Linux and the inner workings and how things are put together, Open Susa just makes a heck of a lot of sense and a lot of the decisions they made. So the installation, let's go ahead and jump into that. Um, it's initially put on a ButterFS system or BTFS system. I like to call it ButterFS. I don't know if anybody else out there calls it that, but that's what I'm gonna call it. So BTFS is what I'm talking about when I say that. And uh, it's, it's pretty awesome. I, I love that file system. It's a great file system. The only thing I don't like about it is it's not compatible Dropbox. Dropbox completely drops support for ButterFS. So important to note, if you're a Dropbox user, you need to have at least like an ext4 uh, drive or partition that you can put your Dropbox on. But uh, I just learned that today when I put this in and I was installing all my apps and Dropbox is one of them. It did not like the ButterFS. So that's no problem. I had another drive that I went ahead and I was like, you know what, I'm going to put donate that to Dropbox anyways. So I installed it is just the stock settings with ButterFS and the installation i pretty much said go and then i went and ate dinner with my family and we watched a movie afterwards and i did really check up on it but it finished just fine restarted booted up uh the bootloader is a really beautiful it's beautified grub basically from what i saw i'm not sure if they're using grub or not uh so don't quote me on that because again i just hit the default settings and left the room and it finished flawlessly sitting on my desktop everything was functional good to go and that was my installation experience man i i think i could train a monkey to do that which is just completely awesome and a lot of my excitement in this video also comes from kde plasma having a uh, piece together xfce where i customized it and i did all these other things and then i went to i3 window manager which all it is is customization KDE Plasma was just so nice on top of this just because it's a very, very good uh, desktop environment. One that I absolutely love. It worked great and it's so intuitive that it's very familiar to me being a lifetime Windows user from like 15 something years, or actually 25 years, I, I don't know, long time. And uh, a lot of where they put things just made a lot of sense to me. So I didn't really have to search around very much. I just went into settings and was able to set all the stuff that I wanted to set. And other things I'm like, hey, this is actually a lot better than any other operating system or any other desktop environment, just because I'm able to set like hotkeys to applications, right? I just right click the application and say, set hotkey. That's pretty cool. So I, some of this is just super excitement over KDE as well. I'm gonna have to make a different video on that aspect. I don't wanna get too much in the weeds there. Um, but that was also the bundling of all this in. It's very clean and just easy. And as far as Tumbleweed goes, it's a rolling release, but it does seem like 
it's pretty far behind as far as from Arch. I was used to being just really, really bleeding edge, where I was already on, you know, 4.20 and I was running on it. And then the LTS release of uh, Arch was already up to 4.13 or 4.19.13. And the rolling release of OpenSUSE is only on 4.19.11 right now. So it's not even caught up to the LTS release of Arch, which is kind of funny, which I mean, we're talking about a, maybe a month, month and a half release span here. So not a long time. So that's not a knock at it by any means. I just thought it was pretty funny. They do lag that behind a little bit, even in the rolling release, which was a shock to me, especially coming from Arch where it's just cutting edge. So or bleeding edge, however you want to look at it. So that was my installation experience of OpenSUSE. So let's get into the overall first impressions of OpenSUSE when I get to the desktop. Uh, first things first, Yast, as far as configuring, getting in and out, it's so nice not having to memorize and use all those <laughs> terminal commands to adjust system settings or to uh, kind of be hunting through menus. How KDE and OpenSUSE and Yast is set up, uh, just great. Uh, as far as all the stuff I needed to change, I've just started this today. I'm like hour maybe three in as far as configuration, actually probably about two hours in, but not very far. And I already feel like I've completely configured all of OpenSUSE and, and my KDE environment just in those two hours. And I've never used either. That speaks loads. I mean, when it came to Arch, when it came to a lot of other distros I've tried, heck, even Ubuntu, uh, it being the first distro, I was hunting around for a lot of stuff. Well, that, I mean, this was just light years ahead of anything I've seen as far as that goes. Uh, I mean, OpenSUSE probably is not a first. I mean, maybe it is just the best distribution to cut your teeth on. I don't know. I just know... It is awesome right now for me because of all the just how intuitive everything is. And I'm about to show you guys some of my desktop, how I've configured things. And again, this is pretty raw. This is only two hours old and I've already gotten all my hotkeys set. I've already gotten, I, it has widgets and other stuff. I went ahead and dropped some of those on, changed my wallpaper, downloaded a new theme, applied the theme. Just all this stuff is already done and just ready to go literally in just about an hour or two. So. Uh, overall, first impressions, great. If I had to pick out one negative about OpenSUSE, is that stupid discover software store. Yeah, I tried to install a couple pieces of software. I think I had, uh, I think it shut, no, shuttered failed on there. Um, Hayden Live, I think also failed. Uh, there was one or two packages I actually got to install through it, and I was just like, this is stupid. I'm not going to do it. So I... Discover store from or whatever it's called. I'll, I'll look it up when it's on here and show it to you. Horrible. Don't use it. Don't bother with it. Just go directly into install and remove programs, the Yast version, and make sure you add the Pac-Man repository. And off you go. You just type your stuff in there and, and install it from, from there. Don't bother with their software store. I think they that's like a half-baked solution because it wasn't able to resolve dependencies and a variety of things, but that's my only negative I've had thus far. So day one, some mashing success. I'm gonna go ahead and say this is probably the most fun I've had on this. And this is definitely one of those new distro highs. But uh, man, I mean, if I, if I had to say I wanted to stick with the distro right now, based on my day one experience, it's gonna be this distro. I love it that much. Uh, but you know, uh, we'll see what happens as I go through this experience because everything's great on day one. I don't think if you go through any of my past day one videos, I had something really bad to say like, oh my God, this is horrible. Um, almost all of them are kind of cool because it's something new you're learning, you're going after it. And that's why, I, you know, I, I really do like open Sousa and just as far as my day one goes, I'm really, really liking it right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and show you some of the desktop I've set up. I got little widgets here for the OpenSUSE. Kind of gives me this uh, 
knee-jerk reaction of, I don't know if I like this. It reminds me of Vista. <laughs> if you guys ever dealt with Vista, you'd know about the widgets and how horrible they were. But this is kind of cool. I like just setting them on my desktop. I don't like to put many icons on the desktop. So I went ahead and set that up. You know, I already got this. I'm already chopping up some video. It's actually this video I'm making right now. I figure why not go ahead and do this B-roll in the middle of it. And then uh, I got my uh, Dolphin file editor, which I haven't used Dolphin very much. And it's kind of cool. I, I kind of digging it. Um, already got OBS. I'm recording again this video in OpenSUSE. So if the sound or the video is all jacked up, well, uh, that's why. It's a brand new install. I just did my configurations. Hopefully I didn't screw up my limiters and compression too much on my audio here. I'm hoping for a nice, crisp, clean audio, even maybe even better than my old videos. Uh, it feels like every time I do it, I get a little bit better when I do this setup from scratch. Uh, overall, I changed the menu to the more old school. The default style, you can actually go in here and change from uh, application launcher to this. I kind of like the old school style, so uh, that's that's what I like. I removed all these so settings. I did install uh, Chrome. Of course, I'm a big Chrome guy to the demise of many Linux users, but I love Chrome and removed Firefox. Uh, when you do this, it does break some stuff like the one click Yast installs in OpenSUSE, but I'll probably go into this more in detail in another video. Um, I just kind of wanted to do just like a flip through here just to kind of see, hey, this is this is what you can expect on OpenSUSE. And, uh, you know, here's my whole desktop. Um, and you can kind of just see how everything's laid out. Super easy, super, super nice. I will say kind of a thing that kind of threw me through a loop first was one, the system settings in KDE, understanding the difference between that and then going into actual YAST, um, which is more uh, from the system level from what you see in OpenSUSE. So, from here, you can do a lot more configuration like your firewall, user group management, which the user group management, I didn't know if I like that or not, but I love it because I can add a lot of stuff when I do virtual box and things like that. Super easy to set up, which I've already got that installed and set up. Um, and it's just all kind of right here, which is just super awesome. Um, the theming and downloading, uh, I, I can attribute that to KDE just because of how easy they made it. Um, which that was back here, I believe, and uh, workspace theme. You could actually go in here and just download it. So I, I don't wanna go too much in here. I'm gonna make a separate video on actually configuring um, and doing all this and grabbing all these themes. It's just coming from like what I was doing, everything with manual. Oh man, uh, getting into something like this, it just feels like it's amazing. So uh, that's all I wanted to do. Just a quick sneak peek of OpenSUSE, how I set it up. Um, let me know what you guys think. You might be like, hey, you're missing a complete uh, setting here or there. Let me know. And I will go ahead and put that in here and do that for the next videos, which I set up. I do want to spread in some OpenSUSE here and do an actual how-to of the actual installation and show you guys all of that and the configuration in depth. But that's a separate video. For this video, I just want to give you an opinion of my first day in OpenSUSE. So that was the overall end of day one of OpenSUSE. Smashing success. Loved it. Every bit of it. Uh, the software store, I never use them anyways. Like Ubuntu one's pretty decent, I guess. But I, I never, I had some of the same problems with it not finding dependencies. None of the software stores are very good, in my opinion, when it comes to Linux distros. Um, but other than that, man, I, I've fallen in love with this distribution just on day one. Like, love at first sight or second sight because I've already installed it once. Actually, I installed the Leap. I've never installed the rolling release. This is the first time with the rolling release, and I love it. So that is the end, my conclusion from day one. Love the initial impressions that I'm getting, how intuitive and easy it is. Uh, you just can't get much better than that. Uh, whether or not I stick with it, 
let's see. I, I'm planning on probably like a day three. I don't like to do, I like to let it simmer for a little bit because usually there's some sticking points. And the one I see here is there's not a whole lot of things like Arch had. When I went to install some obscure packages, um, you know, it had the AUR where I could just go boop, yay, dash S, and then just it would build it and do everything for me. I don't think I'm gonna have quite that luxury in OpenSUSE, so let's see. But that's it for day one, and uh, let me know what you guys think. If you have any comments, things I should try in OpenSUSE while I'm here. Um, like I said, it's gonna be at least a 10-day challenge. If it goes much like day one, I might just be sticking with this distro for good and then just be doing other ones in another box altogether because this is my main machine. But I don't know, it's too soon to tell. Day one's always just high. Um, so that's it for today's video guys and I'll see you in the next one.